The difficult is what takes a little time. The impossible is what takes a little longer. This phrase was first said by a Norwegian explorer, and I believe it is absolutely true. This video is about the time someone in England achieved the impossible. This video is about how Roger Bannister broke the four minute mile in 1954 and what you can learn from his example if you want to truly achieve impossible goals in your life. Let's go. Hey, I'm Leon, CEO and founder of Master, a peak performance running company that transforms entrepreneurs into elite performers that can achieve in one day what they previously achieved in one week. I've coached and trained hundreds of entrepreneurs and invested in 37 of them. So this video is about how to achieve impossible goals. And truth is, you already know how to do it. You just don't do it. Right? The way of achieving an impossible goal is breaking it down into the smallest chunks that are still actionable and then perform each one in sequence until you achieve the impossible goal. As Henry Ford just said, nothing is particularly hard if you break it down into small enough pieces. So achieving the impossible is all about understanding the process you need to follow, break that down into small chunks and then execute it on the process without getting distracted. This is how you can achieve anything in your life. This is how the Americans were able to put a man on the moon in less than a decade since Kennedy first told the NASA that they wanted a man on the moon. It's all about breaking that down into small chunks. And this is exactly how Roger Bannister, a medium distance athlete from England, achieved what at that time was thought impossible. See, Bannister wasn't a particularly gifted athlete. He was good. He went to the Olympics in 1952, but he didn't have the results he thought he deserved. In fact, he was thinking about retiring after those 1952 Olympics. He was not the number one in the track team. For whatever reason, he committed to break the four minute mile, which was something that had never been achieved before. In fact, it was thought to be impossible. The record was a mile in four minute, two seconds and had stood for more than nine years. Nobody seemed to be able to break it. But Bannister, since he had nothing to lose, decided he was going to attempt it. And the system he used to achieve it was incredibly simple. A uh, four minute mile in four minutes implies running a quarter mile in less than a minute. And that's the first milestone he focused on achieving. Quarter mile in less than a minute. Then he went for half a mile in two minutes. A quarter mile is 400 meters for those using the metric system. So 400 meters in less than a minute, then 800 meters in less than two minutes, then three quarters of a mile or 1200 meters in less than three minutes, and finally one mile, 1600 meters in less than four minutes. And that's how on May 6, 1954, in a track in Oxford, Roger Bannister was able to break the four minute mile. That day, the timekeeper looked at the time watch and saw three minutes, 59 seconds. This is the story of someone who never believed something impossible was out of his league. Now, before we dive into the actual footage of the moment, which I'm incredibly excited about, let me know if you have ever tried something impossible that was eventually achieved by you because you broke it down into small pieces. What did you attempt that you end up achieving because you knew this secret? Let me know. I truly want to know. Now, let's watch the video. As the gun fired, Chris Brasher went into the lead and I slipped in effortlessly behind him, feeling tremendously full of, full of running. My legs seemed to meet no resistance at all, almost as if impelled by an unknown force. We seemed to be going so slowly. Impatiently, I shouted faster, but Brasher kept his head and didn't change the pace. leg met no resistance at all. This is a proof of one of the core tenets of full performance, which is full embodiment. No friction between where the mind wants to go and where the body is able to go. And this signal that this performance was going to be a special one. I went on worrying about the pace until I heard the first lap time, 57.5 seconds. In the excitement, my knowledge of pace had deserted me. 
Brescia could have run the first quarter in 55 seconds without my realizing it, because I felt so full of running. But I should have had to pay for it later. Instead, he had made success possible. At one and a half laps, I was still worrying about the pace. A voice shouting, relax, penetrated to me above the noise of the crowd. I learned afterwards it was Stamford's. Unconsciously, I obeyed. If the speed was wrong, it was too late to do anything about it. So why worry? This is very important because he is discussing the second stage of a flow state. Once you release, when you let go of the pressure and you just, as he says, unconsciously obey the performance. At this point, Mr. Bannister was about to enter a flow state. I barely noticed the half mile passed in 1 minute 58 seconds. I was relaxing so much that my mind seemed almost detached from my body. It was incredible that we could run at this speed without strain. I was barely aware of the fact that Chris Chataway was now going into the lead. At this point, he was in a flow state. He said that the mind was detached from the body. He was discussing the concept of optimal experience. This is a flow state. This is when things become effortless. When you feel your best and you perform your best because you are ready to perform. Because you have a level of skill that matches the difficulty of the task. Bannister had trained so hard to get to this moment that when the time came, he was ready. Three quarters of a mile, the effort was still barely perceptible. The time was three minutes 0.7 seconds, and by now the crowd was roaring. A four minute mile was possible. Somehow, to do it, I had to run the last lap in 59 seconds. Chataway led round the next bend, and then I pounced past him at the beginning of the back straight, 300 yards from the finish. I had a moment of mixed joy and anguish when my mind took over. It raced well ahead of my body and drew me compellingly forward. I felt that the moment of a lifetime had come. It's not conscious anymore. It is unconscious. He's compelled. His mind and his body are in unison going towards the same goal. Nothing could stop them at that point. Those last few seconds seem never ending. A faint line of the finishing tape stood ahead as a haven of peace after the struggle. I leapt at the tape, like a man taking his last spring to have, save himself from the chasm that threatens to engulf him. My effort was over, and I collapsed almost unconscious with an arm on either side of me. It was only then that the real pain overtook me. I knew I had done it before I even heard the time. I felt as if I was too close to have failed. I knew I had done it before I even heard the company. Before knowing for a fact if he had broke the record, he just sensed it inside. And this is one of also what happens with elite performance. You don't need to see the results to know whether you gave it all, whether you show up at your best. And as you now know, if you master the process, the outcomes take care of themselves. And this is proof that Roger Bannister was performing at his best. He unleashed his full potential on that track and achieved what at that time was deemed absolutely impossible. So I thought you're as excited as I am because I truly love this story, how we can push past our self-perceived limitations and achieve what previously was thought impossible. In fact, the human mind works in a way that once we truly believe something is easy and we are capable of doing it, we do it. In the following year, after Roger Bannister had broke the four minute mile, 24 people achieved it, something that previously was thought of as impossible. But what's even crazier is that his record only stood for six weeks, only six weeks. Suddenly everybody seemed able to achieve the impossible. 
So now think about what it is that you're trying to achieve that seems impossible. Are you trying to build a business? Are you trying to progress in your career, building new outreach systems, hiring people, signing partnership? What is it? Map it out, break it down and fully believe you can do it. And you may have a chance of achieving it. It's all in your mind. Life is just a mental game. Learn how to play it. Of course, if you want proven help from people that essentially train people like you to achieve their impossible goals, you know where to find us. I'll be happy to discuss your application for this Master Performance Accelerator. Talk soon.